I really want to acknowledge he's not able to be with us tonight, and that is Stuart Timmons. And without his groundbreaking research and his phenomenal biography of Harry Hay, we might not even be here tonight. Uh, I, I visited Stuart uh, a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if most of you know, Stuart uh, suffered a really debilitating stroke about five years ago. And he's recovered enough to be able to walk, to sort of talk, but he, his mind is still incredibly active. And I went and discussed, discussed with him. I told him about what the, the panels were going to be and the workshops, and he was just beaming. And so he did want to send his love to everybody who's here. And I do want us to send our love to Stuart tonight. Um, the other person who I think we owe a great debt of gratitude is our person who's going to be speaking to us tonight, and that's Will Roscoe. Uh, Will and I go way back, at least to 1980. Uh, we knew each other not just through the ferries, but through the, uh, the anarchist activist community in San Francisco, where Will and his partner Bradley published a magazine called Vortex. Uh, again, Will and I trans, what's the word, transmutate, no, transnational, no, what's the word? We transcended different communities <laughs> as <laughs> that time. We were anarchists, we were radical fairies, we were involved in many different things. And um, Will's great contribution, really, to our history and to our anthropology, I think is one of the great shining examples in gay scholarship. Um, he's not only done anthropological work, historical work, he's also written a novel about uh, Asian American tweakers <laughs> in the club scene. Um, he's done work with Dance Safe in San Francisco, a, a movement to make drug taking safe for the people who are taking drugs in, in the dance scene. And his breadth of scholarship as well as his humanity and the work that he's done in his life is just phenomenal, and I think we're really lucky to have him here tonight. So I would like to introduce my dear friend, Will Roscoe. Exactly the way he drove a car. First to one bank, and then to the other bank. Throttle forward. Brad and I going like this. John's going, oh, these river island communities. The technology is so beautiful, you know. Our dog is in the front of the boat going, ah, ah, ah. And Brad and I like, what? grabbing this, the wheel from his hand. Well, that's what it was like with Harry. For nearly 15 years, Harry, John, Brad and I were an intrepid foursome. Piling into Harry and John's little pickup, heading off in every direction where there was something Harry thought we should see, experience, discuss. From old missions to living pueblos, museums and hot springs, visits with homophile elders and crazy characters he had a way of befriending, irrigation ditches where the water ran upstream, mountain lakes in the Sierra Nevadas where Harry was sure young Native Americans had their vision quest, uh, pueblo ruins where a Tewa elder pointed out to Harry and said, that's where your people live. 
And every Christmas, a tree fastidiously decorated with pagan symbols and Harry's turkey, turkey stuffing that took all night to make. We stayed in the camper shell, unloaded into the driveway next to their cottage in LA, with avocados from an overhanging tree popping onto the roof all night long, Harry drinking Nescafe and taping music, John tinkering in his workshop making kaleidoscopes. For me, it began in the summer of 1976, when I was an intern at what was then called the National Gate Task Force here in New York. I was 21, a college student from Missoula, Montana. In the office of the closet with the Mimeo machine, I found a thin black bound book with a bold yellow type, Homosexuals Today, 1956. Published by One Incorporated, it had an essay by Harry telling the story of the original Mattachine. Now, in those years, gay politics tended to polarize between a leftist view that considered the very notion of an LGBT movement too single issue to be part of the real struggle of the working classes and against imperialism and that of the assimilationists, who simply wanted gays to send them checks so they could lobby liberals and please don't do drag at the parade. In fact, skip the parade. <laughs> but in Harry's story of early Mattachine, I sensed another kind of politics, and I wanted to know more. I finally met him at the first Radical Fair gathering in 1979 in Arizona, and then again at the next national gathering when Bradley Rose joined me. On an evening in 1982, my adventures with Harry took a new turn. When we were talking about ancient history, and I asked a question. Well, if you want to know the answer to that, you'll have to get into that. And he gestured vaguely toward a dark corner. There, I discovered, was a stack of old-time press board boxes filled with notes, typed and handwritten on half sheets of letter, letterhead purloined from the companies where Harry had worked over the years.